said in 1 Corinthians. We're singing about his love today, family. And we're coming off the completing our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We'll be taking communion at the end of this message. And as the team is worshiping and, they, and even as I woke up this morning, even with uh, the heaviness of what God is doing in the midst of all of us, I'm reminded right now where the apostle Paul said that love is patient. That this is just not a scripture for for a wedding ceremony. But this is actually a scripture where God wants to touch you right where you are. He said that love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily anger, it keeps no record of wrongdoing. Come on somebody. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects. When you're vulnerable, his love always protects. When you're in isolation, his love always protects. When, you're, when it's your fault, his love still finds a way to wrap his arms around you and hug you right in the midst of your pain, right in the midst of your disappointment. His love always goes after you. Even in the deepest, darkest valley, his love finds you there. It will protect you there. It does not just on a mountaintop. His love always protects said that his love always trusts, it always hopes, always preserves. But I love where it says in verse 8, it says that love never fails. Amen. That is love. Oh, I can feel it today, family. Come on. And wherever you may be right now and whatever the enemy has been whispering to you, I'm here to encourage you as your big brother today, as your pastor, his love never fails. It's so unreckless that it doesn't make sense. Even Apostle Paul said his love is a mystery to all of us that we can't even get a full glimpse of this type of love. It chases me down even when I'm trying to run away, even when I don't want to walk in a calling, even when I'm turning my back against him, even when my mind is not on him. His love still finds a way to reach me. If you were getting a plane right now and drive and your thoughts are driving you crazy. His love is going to meet you right there because his love never fails. He has a love that will wrap his arms around you. If you can just open up your palms as we begin to shift it from this moment. Heavenly Father, fill us up with your love even right now. Give us a freshness of what you're doing in this moment even right now. That there's something new that we embrace right now. A deeper sense of who you are. Enlighten our hearts so that we can see you like we never had seen you before. That your glory, your majesty is so deep that your love rids us of all of the unworthiness of all of the, the pain of all of the woe is to me. Your love unpacks all of us and you see us just as we are, as wretched as we are, and you still embraces us. We repent right now. Hey God. Yes, Lord. We repent right now where we turn our back on you, where we didn't choose to sit at your table and we chose to sit at other tables. We chose other idols. We chose other, other options, but we choose you right now. We repent. And we say, take us as we are. 
take us as we are. It's in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. Let's remain standing. We're going to go dismiss our celebration youth. We're going to put our hands together for all of our middle and high school. And do me a huge favor, family. Can we just welcome our online audience? Come on. Our online family, come on. Thank you guys so much for joining us in worship. There's a word in the house today, family. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Luke 22. Man, any, any other preachers in here, when God shift your message, oh God, you gonna have to take the wheel on this one. <laughs> God will turn your message upside down. But it's gonna be a good one, family. I believe God is really speaking to us. I know God has been speaking to you throughout the fast, and come on, you're, you're, you're almost there. You made it to the finish line. We're gonna take communion, and then you can go get your steak. You can go get your burger. You might even swing by Mickey D's if that's, if that's your blow, but that's your boat, do what you gotta do. Eat your oatmeal cream pie, Julius, come on. But it feels good in here, family. And as we welcome in our online audience, continue to pray for our online family. Next week, I just want to continue. I drifted uh, last Sunday. We are one Sunday away from live streaming family. Come on. That may, that may not sound big to you, but I'm telling you, from your generosity family, I'm from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for sowing. Thank you so much for serving. I'm spreading the gospel that there's people not just right here in the DMV, where they may find themselves. They may be in isolation, but the gospel can reach them. They may be going, but the gospel can reach them. So this is why your giving is so important. Because we don't know the lives that you are help changing. You may be in this room right now, but uh, uh, online, online, so as we continue to sow, I'm, I'm, I'm in, incredibly blessed by that. All right, let me stop talking. Let's get into this word. Come on. Luke 22, verse 14, and it reads, When the hour came, he reclined at the table, talking about Jesus here, and apostles with him. Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will, need, I will not eat it, eat, excuse me, eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, he broke it gave it to them. And he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after the supper and said, this is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Somebody say poured out. Oh, his blood is still pouring out. Come on, somebody. Amen. One sacrifice, but his blood is still pouring out. This is a, a blood that never loses its strength. It is still being poured out today and forevermore. His blood never loses its strength. Thank God for the blood of Jesus that's still being poured out even right now. But verse 21 is where we find ourselves at. He said, but look, the hand of the one betraying me is at the table with me. <sighs> Sometimes you can feel like you're in a season where you're breaking bread with the enemy. Sometimes you can feel like you're in a season where you're, you're breaking bread, but Judas is sitting right beside you. I'm not talking about your spouse, so don't, 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 don't nudge your, 
not talking about your spouse family. Come on, we're, we're dealing with relationships next, next month. Meet me there. We're going to go in. But I'm talking about the Judas that lives in your mind. I'm talking about the Judas that lives in your heart. That you've been wrestling at a table, you've been breaking bread, but you haven't just been talking to God at this table. You've been having conversations with Judas, breaking bread with the enemy. You've been having a long enough conversation with Judas, and Judas been saying, you can't do this, and Judas been saying that you're not enough, and Judas is saying that you've been rejected. You've been breaking bread with the enemy way too long. Even when I look at that scripture, even though Jesus entertained Judas, but he didn't entertain Judas too long. He was more focused on his assignment rather than having a focus just on Judas. Matter of fact, he said it this way. We're going to get into this text. He said, whatever you're going to do, Judas, go do it quickly. I'm not going to sit here and have a conversation with you too long. Because whatever you got to do, go do it quickly. Because actually what you're getting ready to do is part of your assignment. It's going to help me get closer to my fulfillment. So whatever you got to do, devil, you go ahead and do it. It's just getting ready to set my God up to do something special in my life. So I'm telling you right now, I speak to all Judas that's in your life right now. And I pray, go do it. Because all of what it's going to do is make God fulfill his passion of what he's getting ready to do to do in your life. When I look at that text, Jesus needed a Judas. We pushed Judas all to the side and actually Jesus embraced Judas. To the point he actually didn't call him an enemy, he actually called him an employee. He actually called Judas to the table. And here's what I'm understanding even in this season, babe that God would take conflict and he would turn it into an assignment. Amen. If we would just release ourselves to God, God would change our perspective of what Judas has actually came into your life to do. Yes. Could it be that the Judas is actually on an assignment to push you so that you can release what God has put inside of you? Yes. But we push Judas off and Jesus embraced him because Jesus understood the assignment of what God was getting ready to do. But here's the special thing about Judas, and I'm going to give you the title, I'm going to have you sit down. Because Judas and even the rest of the disciples were standing, sitting, excuse me, sitting by the bread of life. And Judas was more entertained about the money and the bread that he was getting ready to go get. He was so blind to the bread of eternal life that he couldn't even see that the one that he's sitting beside is everything that he needs. If you're taking notes, here's my title today, family. Just look to your neighbor and say, blind to the bread. Blind to the bread. I just wonder, are you blind to the bread that's in your life right now? I just wonder, are you missing the manna, the bread that's always ever present, the daily bread that God is always feeding us? We could be sitting at a table and we're blind to the bread. Father God, we thank you for this word. We ask that you open our minds, open our hearts, clear our thoughts even right now. We know that your word says that your mercies are new and fresh every day. That you never give us anything that's stale. Everything that you release is fresh. Everything that you release is new. We come to you as sons and daughters. Maybe we're lost right now. Maybe we're confused right now. Maybe we don't understand what the next may be. And we're in a season of doubt. We're in a season of uncertainty. But we know what's one thing that's certain is that the bread of life is always present in our life. So we feast off your table today, Heavenly Father. Feed us in this time. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. amen. Go ahead and have your seats, family. There's something powerful 
about a table family. Guys like my nice little presentation up here, come on. Thank you, Pastor Brennan, for your creativityness. But there's something powerful about the table. See, the table is a powerful place, family. It is one thing that we all have common, a common place with. Come on, somebody. You, in your home, you got a table. Hey, Amen. Somebody just talk back to me. You got a, you got a table in your home, and it's, there's so many powerful things that happens at a table. Come on, we break bread Amen. at a table. We have dialogue, conversations at a table. Come on, we, we even have our first date at a table. Come on, somebody. Now, matter of fact, Pastor Brennan, no, we didn't have our first date at a table. We actually had our first date at a movie theater, but that don't kind of fit the context. We got teenage love. I didn't, I ain't have money for a, a, a dinner date yet. I only had money for the $5 man. Hey, come on, somebody. <laughs> But at the table, there's some powerful things that happen at the table. We celebrate anniversaries at the table. Matter of fact, for all of my business people here, come on, we fill and break deals at the table. This is, there's something powerful about the table. Even when I look in this text, there's something powerful about the table. See, the table represents access to one another. When we have healthy conversations, come on. Sometimes at the table, you can get the good, you can get the bad, or you can get the ugly. Come on, somebody. It's at the table where you can have great conversation, but also at the table, we can actually have some disagreements at the table. Come on, somebody. Or you can talk back to me. Come on, your dysfunctional family. Let me go back to Thanksgiving. Don't get all holy on me right now. I know we're going to hit relationships next week, and we're going to go in. But at the table, you get the good, the bad, and the ugly because at the table, it represents conversation. It represents where you invite somebody in to actually sit with you, where vulnerability has access and they can see you at a deeper place than they have ever saw you before. This is why we have coffee and lunch, because we want to actually go deeper than just having a regular conversation. There's something powerful about the table in our society. It lets us know that tables are all around. You got, like I said, you got tables in your home. Matter of fact, you can go to the community park and they got picnic tables. There's something powerful about a table. But I don't want to just come to you today to talk about the importance of a physical table. I want to talk to you about the table that resides in your heart and your mind today. Because when I look at this scripture, and I love it in Psalms 23 and 5, it says, you prepared a table before me in the presence of my my enemies. This is, I love this scripture from from, from David. He said, you prepared a table for me, God. But sometimes this table sits in the middle of a valley that's surrounded by some enemies. And here's where we can find ourselves in, family. We can find ourselves in seasons in our life where we're sitting at a table that's surrounded by some enemies. See, I love the visual here that David has. He's, he's, he, I can see a table in the middle of a valley, but there's wolves around. There, there, there's other animals around. And I love, he said, but you prepared this table. God prepared this table that right in the middle of what you're going through, God can feed you right in that valley. But here's the beauty. Here's what we have to catch, family, because we can easily be in a season of our life understanding the table that God has prepared for us. But sometimes we actually pull up a seat for the enemy to sit right with us. See, what I love about this table right here, this table represents one chair. It is just one chair. It's not multiple chairs around this table. It is just one chair for you and God to commune together. But we can easily pull up multiple chairs. So now we're not, now we're sitting at a chair by ourselves, but now depression is sitting with us. Anxiety sits with us. Come on, what what other chairs have you been pulling up to sit with you and and camp with you and break bread with you? And I just wonder, are you pulling up multiple chairs to sit with you where you're supposed to be in a season of just sitting with yourself with God? See, I love the scripture. It says this. It says this. Peter said it this way. It says, cast your cares upon him 
All of your anxiety, if you break down that word cast, it actually means to throw it, release it, not hold it, and walk with it. See, a lot of times we're in a season where God needs to, God is teaching us the difference between casting and holding. What's the idols in your life that you're holding right now? What's the idols that when we come to him and we, we cast our thoughts to him? We don't hold our thoughts to him. We cast our thoughts at his feet. We cast the things that happen in our life. We cast our visions toward him. We got to get away from holding on the things that might make us look great in life and get into a place with God where we learn how to cast it to him. Because when we cast, we embrace his love at a deeper level. See, God is teaching us how to cast, but when I look at this text and Jesus himself found himself sitting at a table with the enemy, I I, I keep just looking at this text over and over, and like I said before that Jesus was focused on assignment, he wasn't distracted by Judas. That that, that said, what's, what's the Judas that's in your life right now? See, if I, if I go over here and, and, I, take, and, I, and I take a seat at, at this table, this, we, we, we can sit in seasons of our life just like this, where, where, where we're sitting with our thoughts at the table. We're sitting with our pain at the table. We're, we're, we're sitting with, with, what's the next thing that you're going to do, God? Where do we go with the uncertainty that's in our life and God is showing us, but the table is set before us. Watch where I'm going, family. And I want you to catch what God is speaking right now because this table that Pastor Brennan has presented is so clean. It is no distractions. It is a moment to sit in his presence and commune with God. Um, we, we learn at his table to cast, not hold. But when we come to his table sometimes and we're having conversations with God, I'm teaching you right now not to not, not I'm not saying don't come to God with your things. I'm teaching you how to learn how to cast and not hold. Because we can, we can live a life like this We can live a life of, I got a scale here, and we can bring out the balance of life. And and, and, and instead of casting it, we hold on to it. And we come, we sit with God at the table. We sit with God at the table. We got we got the candles. We got we got some good bread. We we got communion. We got wine. We're, We're communion with God, but we're holding on to the balance of life, balance of being a husband, balance of being an entrepreneur, the the, the, the balance of God, I don't know, but I got to do this, I got to do that. Does anybody in here ever feel this in a life where they just feel uneven sometimes? One minute you're 80% over here, one minute you're 20% over there, and I just feel unbalanced. But instead of casting it and allowing God to take control, come on somebody, allowing God to give you your wisdom, allowing God to increase your IQ, we bring it to the table just like the apostles did, where they were even, they were also arguing about who's the greatest among them. I'm, I'm going to be your successor, God that they were talking about the balance of life as sitting at the table with Jesus instead of focusing in on the bread, they were focusing in on the balance of life. See, it's other things that we can can have also if you're in a season of your life. No, I'm running out of time. Anybody in here running out of time? I can find myself sitting at the table. I'm almost 40, God. Just running. You see, I know if the camera can zoom in, you can begin to lose track of time and not focus on the bread, but you're focused on the drips of sand that's wasting from your life. 
You can find yourself getting caught deep in thoughts of conversations with Judas and yourself that's in your mind, and we're wasting time because time is precious to us. God, I don't want to, when I'm going to get married, God, I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time, God. So instead of having a conversation with the bread, we are knowing we really have a conversation with the time. Because now we look at the time and we use our own wisdom and our own IQ and we come up with our own strategy instead of focusing in this moment with, with, with the bread who has all answers that actually has your solution of your way of life. We rather focus in on, God, I don't know, I'm running out of time to get this next job of mine. Just running out of, I'm running out of time. So instead of casting it to him at his throne, we place it on the table. We place it on the table. The table starts to get a little crowded. But God, what about, what about my health, God? I know this past Friday, many came up for, the, for, for healing. Come on, I, I'm even going back to, to the doctor. Come on, Pastor Brent, I had a physical this year. Come on. <laughs> because I'm concerned about my health. Yes, Man, Pastor Brennan, we've been in the gym this whole year. <laughs> This entire year we've been in the gym. It's only been like three, four weeks, but a win is a win, babe. And we're, we're, we're so focused on our health, as we should be. But, but instead of having a conversation with God, we have a conversation with everyone else about our health. And so instead of focusing in on the bread, I, I hope you're catching, instead of casting it, watch what goes on. We, we, we just place it on the table, and the table just getting, it's so much up here right now. Matter of fact, we, it's so much, I got, we all got so many hats. Look at my hats, guys. Listen. Man, I'm a father, I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a son, I'm an uncle, and I'm an I'm a entrepreneur. It's so, this looks foolish, right? And this is a life that we live because we got so many hats, we don't know which hat we're wearing today. So we just wear them all, all the time. We don't know when to take it off. When we're talking to our wife, I've got a pastor hat on. I'm talking, I'm preaching to myself right now. We don't know what hat, what hat we got on. I'm talking to my sons and I got my husband hat on. We wearing so many hats and we don't know which hat we're wearing. And we're feeling as though where we got multiple personalities. I know I'm not talking just to myself right now. Because we wear so many, we so many roles and we're trying to figure it out. But instead of going to God and going to his throne, we actually bring the hat and we just lay it on the table. We just lay it, we just bring all of it, we, and we don't cast it, we hold it. That this is who I am, God. This is where I find my value. This is where I find my identity. This is where everyone sees me as great. This is where everyone sees the, the, the perfectness side of me. So I got to bring it to the table. I can't let loose of this. This is who I am, God. I find my value in it. This is what everybody, so we bring it to the table. The table used to be clear just for God to take us as we are, raw and open and transparent. But now we come with a crowded table with God. I, mean, I love these composition books back in the day. Come on. I, I love these composition books. Come on, babe. You remember I used to write you some love letters in these composition books? <laughs> Trying to get some brownie points, family. Come on. But even in, I think, a history, when I look at this composition book, I think a history, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and sometimes we can go back into our composition book of life. And we can hold on to things that happened in our life when God is trying to let go of it. And God is trying to do something brand new in your life, but God is trying to write a new chapter, but we, we were holding on to our old style and our, our old history and what was and what used to be, and we holding on to this composition of life, and God is trying to draw something new in your life in this season, but God can't do anything new in your life because you're still holding on to the old that's in our life. God cannot make room for you. You have to make room for God. 
And if God wants to do something new in your life, whatever, whatever space that we have, whatever space that we give to God, God will always fill it. But it is our old composition crowding your table. It's crowding the table. It's just crowding the table. And I was thinking about it also, you know, for all, all of our degree people in here. Maybe you got one. Maybe you're still going after one. You know, I know it does look like perfect attendance like back in, <laughs> back in school. But we can get caught in this race also. It's a beautiful thing, but it's not your identity. It's a beautiful thing, but God is more than this. It's a beautiful thing, but it can't open doors that God can open. It's a beautiful thing, but it does not have more power over a heavier or powerful voice than God has. Go after it, but don't embrace it. Embrace God and let God add all things to that. You can do, you can be this and you can be all of this, but what I want to teach you is to be Matthew 6.33 in your life. Seek him first. Come on, somebody. And then all of these things can be added unto you. So we can be in seasons of our life where the order can be off. So instead of casting, we hold. And just as though this table is crowded now, depending on where you're sitting, you cannot see the bread anymore. And I just wonder, was Judas in a season of his life where he became distracted by the bread? Excuse me, distracted about around what's around the table instead of focusing in on the bread. What's blinding you from the bread in this season of your life? What's distracting you and pulling you away from, from, from spending time with the bread? Because here's what happens. The enemy wants to get us so distracted where we don't see any value of sitting at this table anymore. And then we, so instead of sitting and responding, we actually forfeit our seat at the table and we go look for other tables to sit at. We go look for other tables to get our validation. We go look at other tables to get confirmation. Look for other tables to get, to get the blessing that only God can do in your life. You can find yourself on a journey looking for a door to be open that only God can open for you. So the enemy wants us to forfeit our time here and get up and say, this is not the table for us. My healing is not here. My breakthrough is not here. My, 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 my next step, it, it, it's not at this table because at this table, I see so much. I see the blessing, but I also see the pain as well. How can my breakthrough be at this table, God? So we go on a journey of looking for another table. Bring, bring out the other table, Dr. Julius. <laughs> so we, instead of sitting at this table, which has the bread of eternal life, we would go sit at Princeton's table. Pray for my knees. Jesus. Wish I had a little Happy Meal right here. And so we, we can sit at this table, but this, this table is filled with deception. It will fool you to the eyes because the enemy will, will say, at this table is no pain. At, at this table, it, 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 it's no confusion at this table. It, 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 it's no struggle at this table. And you can find yourself sitting at this table just because you think it's comfortable, but God is saying you won't get what you need at that table. And I'm just here to, to say because don't allow the enemy to chase you away from that table and come sit at this table. See, see, 
You can forfeit the eternal bread of life that God wants to feed you for seasons of feasting off a happy meal. So it can feel good in the moment. Come on, French fries. Make sure it's a large. Bring back the super size. What are you doing? So we can find ourselves feasting off a happy meal and, and, and we can find ourselves, this is bringing me joy or this is the thing that I need in my life. And it can only do what it's supposed to do for, for a season. And this may be TMI for you, but it can also lead to constipation. I want you to go there with me today. Because there's too many Christians who are not walking in your fulfillment because you're backed up sitting at the wrong table. Because you're backed up sitting at your own options. You're backed up sitting at your own wisdom. You're backed up sitting at with stubbornness. You're backed up sitting at coming up with your own preference. You're backed up sitting at that you think that you're more wonderful with your IQ. And God is saying, I don't need your IQ. I need you to get with me so I can give you the wisdom that you need. And it's not at this table, it's at that table. So we sit in seasons way too long where God is calling us to sacrifice, but we don't want to sacrifice. Yeah. We want an our way. Come on, Burger King. So we sit here looking for a miracle, but it's empty. It's empty. It has nothing for you. It can only do what it's designed to do for a moment. The ingredients is only established to fulfill you in a moment. But the eternal bread never perishes. So we're choosing things that rot away and we're choosing things that will eventually spoil you, that will disappear with the scripture, say it will, it will vanish away. Yes. Rather than sitting in a season and waiting for your breakthrough to happen, because when that breakthrough happens, whatever God does, he does it eternal, and that, God, that man cannot take away what God wants to do. This scripture is just not for murmuring. Man cannot separate what God has put together. So now we can easily be in a season. Ah, let me get up. <laughs> so we can be in a season of options. The tug of what should I do? We can be in a season of, I don't know, God. Over here, I'm trying, but over here, seems a little bit. We, we can be in the season, and this is a Deuteronomy. I said this to the team early. This is Deuteronomy 30. It's not going to be on the, on, on the, because I didn't give the scripture to, to the team, but it hit me this morning where God told the Israelites, he told Moses, he told them to go tell the people that this day you have to choose life or death. You're in the season of your life right now. And I'm preaching to the right house right now. Where well, you can either decide what table you want to sit at. Do I continue to sit at this table? Or do I sit at the table that God has prepared for me? What does the table look like in your life right now? Are you sitting at the table that God prepared or are you sitting at the table that you prepared? What is your preference saying to you right now? That is not about your preference, but it's rather about his promise. And you can only walk out the calling that God has, has ordained and appointed over your life. And you, God is calling you to be obedient in this season. I keep saying it each week. God is not looking for your preference. God is looking for your obedience. God is not looking for your feelings. God is looking for your obedience. And you may be uncomfortable with this table, 
but your blessing and your breakthrough and your promise resides at this table. Can I say it this way, family? I said Psalm 16, 11. Watch this, family. He says, you reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy, and your right hand are eternal pleasures. At this table, come on, somebody. At this table is my path of life. At this table is my miracle. At this table is my breakthrough. At this table is where I get redeemed, is where I get delivered, is where he makes my whole heart, soul all come together. It is at this table. If you don't know what your next look like, I'm here to tell you as your pastor, keep sitting. Gosh. And don't move. Sit with him and respond. Sit with him and say la. Sit with him in the quietness. Sit with him and remove all of the distractions. I'm not gonna break your stuff, babe, I promise. And remove all of the distractions. Cast it away because none of this stuff matters if I don't get you, God. None of this stuff matters if you're not here with me. So I don't care about none of this stuff as long as I got you. I don't care whatever you're getting ready to do next. I just want the bread that's going to feed me. So I remove all distractions. I remove all of the pain. Not another day. I'm not sitting in your presence because everything that I need is found at the table. Sit with him and let him talk. Sit with him and let him preach to you. Sit with him and let him teach you about his word. Sit with him and release your voice. Sit with him and praise God. Sit with him and commune with God. Sit with him with the darkness thought that you ever came up with in, in, in your mind. Sit with him in the iniquity that we all can walk in. Sit with him with repentance in your mind and in your heart. Because God is not concerned right now with all of the other things. He wants you as you are. He wants your heart as it is. Not when he cleans it out. He wants it right now. He's not looking for the perfect you. He's looking for the one you are right now. So we can be in a season of our life waiting to get cleaned up to take the next step in our walk with God. And God is saying, you can't clean yourself up, only I can clean you up. And God is saying, come to my table as you are. Cast all the other stuff away. Cast all of the, the anxiety away. Because God wants you as you are. As I get ready to close, I'm going to invite the team back up. Because we're getting ready to take communion. I want, you to, I want you to catch this family. Because I love our Jewish brothers and sisters. And I love how they take the Passover meal together as a family. In all these years where, where we take communion, there's one cup. But actually, when our Jewish brothers and sisters take communion, there's four cups present. And I love when they go, th go through the, the, the Seder, and they go through the order, and they, they go back to Exodus 6. And this is so powerful because when they read through Exodus 6, if we understand the Passover story, watch how powerful this is. And I, I, I pray you capture it. Because even in these four cups represents at his table four promises. So I love the bread that's present. I love the candles that represents the light. I love the, the wine that represents his blood. But I want you to watch because each cup represents something. And I'm going to go somewhere. I, I, I want to impact it because I'm, I'm feeling what the Holy Spirit is saying right now. Because in the first cup represents sanctification. It, it represents that God wants to set you apart from something. 
that you, you were here, but God came and separated you. This is a process that we all continue, come on somebody, experience sanctification with God. We all need some sanctification on a daily process with God. And he came, separated. This is the communion, follow me, follow me. The second cup represents deliverance. The third cup represents redemption. And the fourth cup represents praise. So when, they, when, when they're taking a meal, watch this, when they're taking a meal, the family, the father, will read through the order. And I love this because they will go through Exodus 6 and it's a reminder that, our, that their God is faithful. And they would take this at the Passover meal and this, as Christians, this is so powerful because we need, to, we need to honor this as well. They're putting themselves in a position to always be reminded that their God is faithful. They're putting themselves in a position and saying that if my God has done it back there for my family, then my God can do it right now where I am. And so they would begin to go through Exodus 6 and it's, it's going to be on a screen and I want to show you how powerful this is because it's four I will statements. Four I will statements. And not, these are just not ancient promises, but these are promises that are still echoing through God's voice even right now. And it goes through, watch this, it says, therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord. And somebody says, I will. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the e Egyptians. The cup of sanctification. That he's looking to relocate you away from depression and connected to joy. That he's looking to change your garments from worried over to worship. That, that, that you were, that you're being under the yoke of a slave to the enemy, but God has come in. He's looking to come into your life and set you apart. See, he's coming for you. Somebody needs to hear that right now. My own life, somebody needs, he's coming for you. Wherever you may be right now, under the yoke of the enemy, God is coming for you. He's coming for you. He says, I will free you from being slaves to them. See, see, you would think, and I was studying this even this morning, you would think when he said that I'm going to remove you from under the yoke, but then he gets in the second one, he said, I will free you. You would think the freeing would have also been a part of the first I will. But watch what God is saying here because sometimes just because God removed you from somewhere, Egypt can still be inside of you. So just because you're saved, a lot of us still have Egypt inside of us. We have an Egypt mentality. We, we, we have an Egypt process. We live like Egyptians, but not instead of living like Israelites. We spend our money like Egyptians. I'm going there too. We live, we have our relationship. There's still some Egypt inside of us. And here's what God is saying. Not only I'm going to remove you, but I'm also going to save you. God is one. He wants to unread the old out of you in this season. God wants to remove that old mindset and give you a new mindset. And then he goes into the third one. He says, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. The word redeem here, it means to actually put back in its original state. 
that, that you've been walking in another state, but I come to redeem you and, and actually put you back in the state that I actually form you in your mother's womb. When I thought of you, I had a, had a state about you. When I called you out of this, I, I had a form about you. When I, when I saw you, even before you were conceived, I had a calling and a purpose in your life. I come to redeem you. And God is saying, I'm coming to redeem you. See, this is the cup of redemption. I want you to catch what God is doing because the first cup is all about the lost. And maybe you're in a season where you're feeling lost. The second cup is all about that he wants to save you. But what I love about this third cup, it's all about being pastored. And all of four, this is the body of Christ. This, this is what God is saying. This is why we come together because God is saying, in order for you to be redeemed and walk out your calling, we got to come together and be taught and be corrected and so that we can learn God is calling us to a higher degree, that God is calling to redeem you. You can't just drink the milk anymore. God is trying to do something bigger in your life. And God is saying it's time to move from the kiddie table and it's time to move to the bigger table because God is looking to feed you on a higher ground. You're an eagle. That's what we said when we first moved in here. But the fourth one, and I'm gonna close, and he says, I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. He went from just having them separate, but now he says people, which means community. And here's the word for you today. You can't do life by yourself. When God saves you, redeems you, and pastors you, he sets you a part of his people so that you can be equipped to walk out the calling I called you to. God is looking to equip you for the warfare that's at hand right now. God is looking to equip you for the calling that's on your life in this season. In order to be equipped, we got to be around community. Your tool, your breakthrough, your advice, your blessing is found in the room. Groups will be launching next month. Get into community. The networking, is the advice that you may need is found in the room. And he goes and he says, then you will know that I am your Lord God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, Jacob, and I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. You can stand to your feet. whispering right now, family. I will do it. Whatever your mind is on right now, whatever the thing that way where your heart is, I, I can hear God saying, I will do it. The pain, I will heal it. The uncertainty, I'll make it certain. I'll make it certain. The heartbreak, I'll make it whole. I will do it. Trust me. I will do it. Four promises that our Jewish brothers and and I'm being reminded even right now that he would do it. He will lead us into this land. As we get ready to close out, I want us to take communion. If you need communion, just go ahead and raise your hand to ushers. They have it. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm a break my bread right here. How about that? Break my bread right here. I, I, I'm gonna go fancy today, Julius. 
But I want to take communion family to close out this moment, 21 days prayer and fasting. And hey, maybe you, maybe God has been blessing you and maybe you got your breakthrough. We've been hearing wonderful testimonies on our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Or maybe you're still in the waiting. And regardless of where you are, he's still good. He's still faithful. And so the power of taking communion, just like our Jewish brothers and sisters at the Passover meal, the power of communion is to make sure we're being reminded that our God is still good. That his blood still rain. That his blood is still pouring out that his body was broken for you and I. I want you to be reminded today, family, that your God will do it. He will do it. So as you have your elements, I invite the online family in as well. It says this in 1 Corinthians 11, it says, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may eat, family. Take a moment, family. And then share your heart with them. In the same way also he took the cup at the supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Family, I love you guys so much. And I believe that everything that God has for you in this season is found at his table. I pray that God will continue to give you the strength, the grace, the encouragement to not run from his table and choose kiddie tables, but have the strength and the boldness to stay at his table as long as you will need. Father God, we love you, we honor you, we thank you. As we get ready to go back into our fourth, fourth worship song, Lord God, as we take communion to be reminded of who you are, we even say right now, thank you so much, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for pouring out your love, your grace, Lord God. Thank you so much that you are Alpha and Omega that's in our life. Thank you so much that you are the internal bread of life. Thank you so much that we have the victory that's only found in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that we are made whole today. Thank you that this is a church that will lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus, thank you, God. We simply say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Good morning, good morning, church. That was an awesome, awesome worship song. Worthy is the Lamb. God gave his only begotten son for us, and we are so thankful to be here before you guys. I am Osa Deva. People know me as Osa in the church. We are family, and I'm here with Josue. Hello, hello. <laughs> now is the time in our service where we come and continue to worship through giving of our tithes and offering. The ushers are here. They'll be passing around buckets for you guys. Now, for those who are not giving currently, I'm going to go ahead and say for those on the online, you can also give through tapping give with Celebration Church. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and give you what you have given to us, Father Lord. We have all come and sacrificed. Some of us have had the opportunity to even fast and pray with you, Father God, for 
specific things as we move into the next step with you, Father God. We thank you for granting us the ability to give back to you, Father God, so that you shall press down, shake it together, and run it in abundance in our lives, Father God. For those who can give and for those who are wishing to, we pray that you grant them the ability and that you multiply those things in their lives and the lives of all those they come in contact with. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen, amen. As uh, My name is Josue. I'm the photographer. You guys probably see me around. <laughs> and uh, we got a couple announcements for you guys. Uh, connect groups are almost here, but signups are today. Everybody ready for that? Yeah. Starting today, you can sign up. Uh, launch starts February 5th, and there's no better way to find community than with, you know, all of us around here. And um, whether it's, you know, it's through casual conversation at a dinner group or a deeper exploration of scripture in study group, uh, there's something for everyone. So anybody can sign up. Uh, just go online and you can sign up through there. I already did. Yeah. We're going to be study group with the men. So we're going to be uh, you know, studying the book of jo uh, Job. So I'm excited for that. Right. And also, uh, Next Step Sundays, if you're new to Celebration Church or recently gave your life to Christ, you're invited to Next Step Sundays, which is today. Uh, for 15 minutes right after service, uh, we'll discuss the next steps in your faith, next steps that you can take here at Celebration Church. And um, next steps is every uh, Sunday, every well, once a month, every Sunday. So if you can't miss, can't come come today, uh, there's more op uh, opportunity for next next time. Uh, so join us. If you can't make it in person, you can also do it online by registering at the link uh, above. So thank you. All right, guys. So we know about next steps. If you didn't get the opportunity to enjoy communion, feel free to go into Next Steps and learn more about how you can give your life to Christ and move into what God has for you. We are all here as a family and we thank you for being here. You didn't have to choose celebration today for those here and those online, but you can choose it again and choose it again because we're here for you. So now everybody, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his sh face shine upon you and his grace, graciousness, <laughs> sorry guys, gracious to you. The Lord lift you and his countenance upon you and give you peace. We enjoyed you guys this Sunday. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday and everybody be blessed. Have a blessed week.